Replaceable tendons provide bridge owners the ability to address unanticipated poor in-service bridge performance. With a little planning for future use, replaceable tendons can also provide additional structural capacity. Let's take a look at some of the unique components of replaceable post-tensioned, or PT, bridge technology, starting with those at the replaceable anchorage. Let's strip away the concrete and reinforcing for a clearer view. Here, in the anchorage, we have a replaceable wedge plate, a replaceable inner trumpet, a replaceable coupler, and a replaceable post-tensioning duct. Let's now look at the non-replaceable anchor components. We have the cast-in permanent outer trumpet, or Diablo form, and the cast-in permanent bearing plate. Shown is an example of another anchor setup that consists of a replaceable heat shrink sleeve, metal pipe, trumpet, and shim plate along with a cast-in permanent form, guide pipe, and bearing plate. Let's move into the bridge span to see the unique components located at a tendon deviator. Let's strip away the concrete for a clearer view. Here we can clearly see the external PT duct passing through the deviator by way of the cast-in permanent Diablo form. With this setup, the tendon is restrained by the deviator, which generates the downward restraining forces acting between the cast-in permanent Diablo form and the external PT duct. Now, let's take a look at the process of tendon replacement. Taking a closer look at our bridge, we discover a damaged tendon. On the innermost tendon, there is a tear in the duct and broken wires. Upon removal of the duct section, we see that one tendon strand is broken and light corrosion appears throughout the other strands. This tendon can be replaced using the as-constructed replaceable PT tendon components and details. Initial cuts are made between the anchorages, as indicated by the red lines. The cutting locations may not coincide with the location of the damage. Shown is a generic cutting sequence. Sequencing is typically done from the midpoint of the tendon, working outward. Using the cutting sequence, the tendon is cut into segments and removed. This process continues until the length of tendon between the anchorages is removed. Looking at the center pier diaphragm wall, we see the cut tendon extending from the wall face. Taking a look at the other side of the diaphragm wall, we see the anchorage that needs to be replaced. First, the grout cap and its encasing PT grout are removed. This frees the replaceable wedge plate from the cast-in bearing plate and allows for the removal of the anchorage, leaving the cast-in permanent form and bearing plate to accept the new anchor. Both anchorages need to be removed, so let's move on to the left abutment of the bridge. Looking at the abutment diaphragm wall, we see the cut tendon extending from the wall face. Taking a look at the other side of the diaphragm wall, we see the anchorage that needs to be replaced. Similar to the central pier anchor, the grout cap and its encasing PT grout are removed. This frees the replaceable wedge plate from the cast-in bearing plate and allows for removal of the anchorage. Note that abutments with replaceable PT tendons need to be detailed with sufficient space behind the diaphragm wall to allow for tendon replacement. Here we have enough space behind the diaphragm wall to remove and replace the wedge plate, the inner trumpet, and part of the post-tension tendon. Depending on the space behind the diaphragm wall, the tendon might need to be cut into sections to allow for removal. Now that the damaged tendon is removed, we can start the installation of the replacement tendon. The bridge needs to be detailed to accommodate the necessary installation processes and equipment. The new PT tendon is installed in a similar manner as the original PT tendon. The one piece of equipment that requires special planning is the PT jack. In our example, the jack is hoisted up under the bridge and through an exterior access hatch. It's then transported to the PT anchorage. 
The jack is then hoisted onto the scaffolding platform and used to stress the new tendon. Note that there needs to be enough room behind the anchorage to accommodate the extended strands and the placement of the jack. Next, the jack is removed. The strands are cut and the grout cap is installed. The final step is to grout the replacement tendon. Taking a look below the bridge, the grout pump is set up and its grout hose supplies grout to fill the new PT tendon. Another option is to set the grout pump on the top of the bridge, coring a small diameter hole in the deck slab for grout hose access. This has been an overview of replaceable PT technology. For more information on this technology and concrete bridges, visit the FHWA bridge website, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.fhwa.dot.gov forward slash bridge forward slash concrete.